everyone, I'm Paul and today I'm upgrading the charging system in my Chinese scooter. In the previous video about this scooter, I replaced my cool off-road headlight with this big shiny chrome motorcycle headlight from Amazon. Ever since I did that, my battery has been dying. I can ride to work for about one week and then the starter cranks very slowly and it feels like the battery is almost dead. I've been recharging it once per week with the plug-in charger at home. Now it's possible this new headlight takes more current than the old one and the charging system can't keep up, or maybe my stator is broken. Either way, I'll test the headlights today and I'll upgrade the charging system to this 11 pole stator that I got from RollingWrenchDenver.com. The kit comes with a stator, voltage regulator, and some wiring. This is how the starter sounds when the battery is fully charged. And this is what it sounds like after riding the scooter about four times, 20 miles total. My battery charger says the battery has 11.5 volts and is 10% charged right now. A good way to test the charging system is to measure the battery voltage while the engine is running. A fully charged battery is 12.6 volts and the voltage needs to be higher than that to recharge it. Around 14 volts is ideal. If it goes over 15, that's too high and you probably have a bad voltage regulator. I'm at 12.2 volts with the engine revved up. I'm not charging the battery right now. I didn't have this problem before I installed the chrome headlight. Let's unplug the headlight. The battery is a bit low, but I have the headlight disconnected. Does my charging system have enough power to recharge the battery now? Thirteen point five volts is good. Okay, so the charging system works, but it doesn't put out enough amps to support the headlight. Next, I want to find out how much power the headlight takes. I set my multimeter to amps DC and the electricity has to run from the battery through the meter to get measured before it goes into the headlight. My battery isn't fully charged and has about 12.5 volts. Voltage is a measurement of electrical potential, similar to water pressure in a hose. It's how strong the electricity is. Amperage is a measurement of how much electricity there is. It's basically how many electrons move through the wire. It's similar to the volume of water measured in gallons or liters. Watts is a measurement of power. Volts times amps equals watts. I'll be testing the headlight with the engine off, but with a working charging system, the voltage will be higher than 12.5 and the wattage of the lights will be higher than what I measured. For a more accurate wattage measurement, do it with the engine running. First, I'm measuring the current going through the low beam of the round headlight. 2 amps at 12.5 volts means this light takes 25 watts of power. The high beam takes even more electricity and measures 2.9 amps. The old headlight did not drain the battery and only takes 1 amp for the low beam. I had it wired for both lights to come on for the high beam and that takes 2 amps. The battery did not get drained when running the old light on low beam. Now it's time to take stuff apart. Unplug the white connector with the green, yellow, and white wires, and unplug the two single red wires in the same harness. The stator is located behind the cooling fan on the right side of the engine. Remove four bolts, then the cooling fan cover. Four more bolts hold the plastic cooling fan. Use the CVT holder tool to keep the flywheel from turning and remove the nut. A magnet works great to pull out the washer. Thread in the flywheel puller tool counterclockwise, then turn the bolt clockwise to pull the flywheel off. I got my tools from Rolling Wrench. The CVT holder tool can be used for the flywheel, clutch, and variator. $35 is a bargain for how much easier your life will be with this tool. The flywheel puller tool is also a must-have if you regularly work on scooters. It has two different thread sizes to work with 50 and 150cc engines. This is the charging system kit I'll be installing today. 
Rolling Wrench sells an 11-pole stator upgrade that includes the stator, wiring, and voltage regulator. You also get the flywheel puller tool in the kit, so you don't need to buy it separately. Two small bolts hold the pickup coil, and two long bolts hold the wiring bracket. Finally, two bolts hold the stator onto the engine. Let's talk about the stator. This is the most common type of stator in a 150cc GY6 engine. This is an 8-coil or 8-pole stator. Seven of the coils charge the battery, and the black one creates a higher voltage but less current for the CDI. The pickup coil is the box in the lower left corner of the screen and tells the CDI when to fire the spark plug. There is a white connector with three wires and separate connectors for the blue and red wires. Do a Google image search for GY6 wiring diagram and you'll find something like this. This diagram might not be exactly like your scooter, but it's close enough. Let's focus on just the charging system. CDI stands for Capacitor Discharge Ignition, and it's the electronic part that controls the coil and spark plug. In the middle of the screen, you see the stator, and in the upper right corner is the voltage regulator and rectifier. Rectifier means it turns alternating current into direct current. The yellow and white wires wrap around the seven big coils in the stator. These wires have an alternating current output and are not grounded. The AC power goes into the regulator where it's converted to DC and the voltage is adjusted to stay between 13 and 15 volts. That power is used to recharge the battery. The other coil on the stator has thinner wire and a lot more windings. It's covered by a protective layer of fiberglass. This coil generates 20 to 100 volts AC. It goes through the red and black wire directly to the CDI. If you touch the red and black wire while the engine is running, it will shock you. Some scooters have a DC CDI that is powered by the battery instead. If the coil with the red wire doesn't work, the CDI doesn't get power and the engine won't run. The box that comes with the stator is called the pickup coil and sends a signal to the CDI through the blue and white wire. The flywheel has a bunch of magnets in it. As the magnets pass the coils, electricity is induced into the wires. The metal bump on the outside of the flywheel passes the pickup and tells the CDI when to fire the spark plug. Set the multimeter to ohms to read resistance. My leads aren't perfect and have 0.2 ohms of resistance. I need to subtract that number from any measurements I take. Measuring across the old pickup coil, I'm getting 152 ohms. The pickup coil on the new stator measures 145 ohms of resistance. Here's what I just did on the diagram. I connected the red lead of the voltmeter to the blue and white wire and the black lead to the ground on the pickup. This will measure resistance across the pickup. The numbers are similar with both stators. If you get close to 0 ohms, it's shorted out, and if you get more than 200, there's a bad connection. Measuring across the old exciter coil, I'm getting 541 ohms. The exciter coil on the new stator measures 379 ohms of resistance. Keep in mind the exciter coil is the one that powers the CDI. If this coil is shorted or has an open circuit, the engine won't run. It's hard to find consistent specs online, but somewhere between 350 and 550 ohms is good. Remember, the leads of my multimeter have 0.2 ohms of resistance. This isn't important when measuring hundreds of ohms, but it will matter when measuring the charging coils. 0.3 minus 0.2 means we have 0.1 ohms of resistance across the charging coils. That's almost a short circuit. It has been charging the battery, but not very well. The new stator has three yellow charging wires. I'm getting the same resistance across each pair of wires, and it's about 0.8. Subtract 0.2 for the leads, and it's 0.6 ohms of resistance. On the diagram, I'm measuring across the charging wires. One lead goes on the white wire, and the other lead goes on the yellow wire. On the 11-pole stator, I'm testing between yellow wires. The new stator is within specs, but the resistance on the old one was too low. You can also test from the yellow wires to ground. There should be no connection. Now let's install the new stator in the scooter. The wiring harness comes out behind the stator and goes up and to the left in the 10 o'clock position. You can use a small impact driver to save time, but the final tightening should always be done by hand. The pickup coil bolts are a smaller diameter, so be careful not to over tighten them. Line up the keyway on the flywheel and install it on the crank. 
A thin layer of grease on the shaft is a good idea to prevent rust. It's possible to get the nut tight enough with an impact driver, but if you want to do it correctly, you have to use the flywheel holder tool and a torque wrench. Check the gap between the pickup coil and the magnet on the flywheel. It should be very close. Connect the blue and white wire from the stator to the red and white wire on the scooter. This is for the pickup coil. Connect the red and black wire from the stator to the red and black wire on the scooter. This is for the exciter coil. The square white connector on the scooter will not be used. Connect the yellow wires to the new voltage regulator rectifier. The yellow wires carry alternating current to the regulator and it sends direct current to the battery through these red and black wires. Let's start the engine and see if the new charging system works. The battery started out low and in just a few seconds I'm up to 14 volts. Now let's plug in the headlight. It's holding 14.1 volts and does just fine with the high beam too. The old voltage regulator is no longer needed. I'll leave the connector here out of the way. I'm going to fast forward through putting my scooter back together. The body panels are different on every Chinese scooter and I have customized mine so much that an in-depth view of all the screws wouldn't be relevant anyway. I installed the new voltage regulator back here the connectors are just in front of it, and the battery wiring is over here. And this is the old charging system. And I'm just going to skip through this stuff too. The battery goes under the seat, and I didn't forget to put the headlight and front plastic back on. The scooter is back together, and the headlight is on high beam. When I rev the engine, the charging system has no problem maintaining 14 volts. Here's another look at the kit I installed. For $139, you get the 11 pole stator, voltage regulator, wiring, and flywheel puller tool. I also recommend picking up the CBT holder tool if you're not a savage. Or just use the impact wrench and tighten your flywheel nut to mystery torque. That's it! Installing the rolling wrench charging system upgrade kit is very easy. These are high quality parts and I'm confident my charging system will work for a long time. While you're here on YouTube, Check out my Chinese scooter playlist. I have many more videos covering most repairs on Chinese scooters. If that's not enough for you, check out Rolling Wrench on YouTube. He has many more repair videos, performance upgrades, and videos about the Honda Ruckus. Thanks for watching.